welcome to Frank's School. Well, this looks complicated. I'm going to try to explain that. This is the sixth year, 17th day, first video. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go outside. I don't know if it'll be today, tomorrow, maybe today. I'm going to go outside and film uh, where this is going to go as sort of a baseline. But anyway, what I've got here is a drawing, my best I can, of a windmill complex here on uh, the at Frank School, uh, I see the use for five windmills, uh, and and this is probably going to be the. F it's not the first I've started. I've started one down here at the Hammer Hut, but this will probably be the first one that'll actually turn. Uh, but anyway, I, it's so complicated that I actually went to work with my fond <laughs> fond memories of an architect's rule uh, two. You need two, I only have one here, two, two triangles, uh, you know, it's in the old days. Uh, I actually had to go to a protractor because it got a little complicated, used a compass. Um, and I did drawings like, uh, oh, where is it, here. Here, I, I mean, I started uh, doing that and I, I really, I really ran needed geometry. The uh, area of a, of a the area of an octagon I found was actually quite complicated. Uh, I finally went to a, a yardstick actually because the scale I couldn't find the right scale on this architect's rule, and I, I was having some trouble reading the numbers. Uh, so anyway, this is there's the. Uh, that's the plan at the moment for the footprint of the windmill. Uh, and, uh, you know, I sketched it small. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm ready to explain this. And now it's partly, it's partly for me, uh, it's partly for me to leave a record of what I want to do. There's a place over there where the tank is already there. It's not hold, ready to hold water, but I laid it up out of uh, manufactured wedge shaped blocks that I have. You'll see that. That's already there. The sawmill building is already there. I put it together from two buildings that had fallen into a pile that a guy gave me. And uh, I, I brought them over and I, I did that all maybe eight years ago, six years ago. I don't know. So it's there. The sawmill is there, but certainly not ready to, to saw anything. But the husk, that's what you call what holds the saw and the mechanism there would be the saw. The carriage track is sort of there, <clears throat> and the carriage track has to go past the saw. I mean, that's kind of an issue because that track and the carriage has to go out there. And the carriage holds what's called the, the set works. And part of the, the set works take quite a sweep, actually, because there's a slides, the head blocks slide, and, and between the two of them, they occupy qu quite a space. That becomes an issue here where it, with the placement of Anita, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Also, at a sawmill, you have a lumber car with its track to take the boards or, or two by whatevers or slabs that come off the saw. You put it on a lumber cart and push it out. Now, usually, of course, that's freestanding and you'd offload it, but I'm packing everything together. So it's not too far from the windmill. I'm, now, I know that I will not be able to saw with a cir four foot circular saw, uh, 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 saw lumber with a windmill. Well, not a windmill. I, well, it would be hard anyway because the, the, the RPM has to be maintained at about 450 RPM for a circular saw. It's not like a bandsaw. You can't just turn it nice and slow and creep past it. You can creep past the saw with your log, but the saw has to be going at a steady RPM. That is a real problem for me with a circular saw. Well, anyway, this stuff is all here. The belt to drive the husk, I have the belt. It's about that wide canvas belt, really nice. I think I paid $35 for it. 30 years ago, <laughs> 35 years ago, but it's in fine shape. And I don't want to have to splice it. So I'll use the length that's there, which means that the place that it's going to be driven from, here's the driving pulley, here's the driven pulley, that is going to depend on the length of the belt. Now the belt's got a tightener, 
and I can I can make it serpentine if I have to as a way of kind of shortening the belt. But anyway, it'll be about there. And with an Oliver tractor, I can back to that the power takeoff. I can drive it straight off the power takeoff, and that actually. By adjusting the pulleys, I probably can get the right speed for that saw. Yeah. But I'm not, in, I'm not trying to go into the business of running a sawmill. I, I'm a teacher. This is Frank's school. But I'd really like it to be shown. I, there's a wonderful friction drive uh, for the carriage, which I'll have it all there. But once again, I have, I have my, well, I, I'm with the tractor. I might have it functioning to rope drive. That's how old. This is a far car. Let's see if I can write that. This is a far car. Far car. I don't know. Something. No, it's something like it's French word. Far car sawmill from the time of steam engines. So maybe about 1880, 1890. And I have two of them. The other one, I'm going to put up on the hill. Uh, but not use the this uh, uh, circuit saw. I'm going to use a, a really wide bandsaw blade, which I was given. That's kind of another story, but also powered by wind. All right, now my problem is where to put this. I think I think I know where the windmill goes. Anita is the name I've given to a comparatively small bandsaw, but the blade's about that long. I, I mean, it's, or wide. It, it's, it's plenty big, but Anita Conda, as opposed to Anaconda, which is the <laughs> bandsaw, well, it's 10 inches, 9 inches wide, and about mm, 50, 60 feet long. That's Anaconda. This is Anita, by comparison, just small. Uh, that's built, not cutting yet, but, but, I, but it's built ready to go here. Pride of the shop is a multi uh, machine that that needs to be restored. This is a patent for it, a drawing for a patent for it. His nickname is Pride of the Shop, and there's the patent. Uh, and I have it, and it'll be fun to restore it. And that that probably could be driven by the windmill, and so could Anita, but Murray. Is, is a is a stationary power unit that Andy and I have made from a Murray riding mower. The the deck was shot and it wasn't going to work very well as a riding mower anymore, but the engine was good. So Murray will go here and Murray can power Anita and I'll run a shaft underneath the floor maybe or over to uh, pry to the shop. M Murray could do all that. M Murray powering the song, <laughs> I don't think. He's got 12 horsepower. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. Well, it'll be enough to turn everything over, maybe, but not to maintain the speed. And then the uh, the uh, windmill itself, um, the footprint of it is octagonal. And what I found through all this calculation was, if the size of the octagon are four foot six inches, four and a half, that area will be less than 100 square feet, 97.78. And as here in this township, anyway, as long as something is less than 100 square feet, you can build anything you want. They don't tax it. You don't need a permit. They don't think about code. I, I guess they call it a toy. <clears throat> so less than 100 square feet, less than 100 square feet, less than 100 square feet. Uh, this I already got the permit for it. It's, it's way bigger. Uh, all right, so the space I have between the tank and the building is 30 foot. The building is 15 foot wide, uh, and so there's the space I have to locate all this stuff. What I'll do is I'll put down blocks, concrete blocks, where the most load is going to be. That's called point loading, uh, point, point loading. And then over the blocks, I'll run what beams I have. And I have five of these that will go underneath sleepers like. I have five, the one's in terrible shape, so I'll double it up here, I think. And then I'm going to go through the various beams that I have, short pieces that are still healthy, and try to guess where this stuff is going to go, uh, to have it underneath. Then over everything, I'll make a floor of, of pallets, and then over the floor, 
on a 45 degree angle rough sawn lumber that I have around just so it'll it'll use up a lot of the stuff that I have around so I'll have one big floor uh, to, to locate these things on <clears throat> so uh, I've chosen my location I know the orientation this line right here goes back maybe 200 years uh, because I pick it up from the archaeological evidence uh, I the, the blacksmith shop way out there is on the same line and it goes all the way to the woods it's related to an old road that was out there and underneath this incidentally there is evidence archaeological evidence underneath here there is in a lot of places uh, and it's one of the reasons that the last thing I would want to do is to excavate and pour a concrete uh, what do you call, footer and do what code would call a, a proper foundation. No, I'm just sitting this stuff on there because of the, for one thing, because of the uh, archaeological evidence underneath it. Um, the tank, oh, okay. Now, in between the various things, I may use pergolas. Uh, those are like open frame things that plants grow on to help to share the, the stiffening against the, the torque of the wind. Uh, <clears throat> so that, that's just an idea. Oh, okay, I've got the orientation. I'll, I'll make it level, <coughs> and then I've got to decide on the height. And I'll pick the height up off of this. It would be lovely if all of this had the same height. And I think the height of where you walk is just going to be at the top of the rails. Uh, there's steel rails for here and for here. These will be like <coughs> wooden rails for this. All right, and then the, maybe finally the tank of water. I think I may see if I can, I've never heard of a hydraulic break, water used as a break, but I think I could do that with that much water because the windmill's got to be controlled. Oh, also, I get up to the second story, I've got to make the thing where I can spin the windmill around to the orientation. It'll be a, a cap mill, it's called. The, 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 the first story, or most of it will be stationary, but the cap will turn. And I think I'll use a Portuguese style with cloth sails. Uh, it's just easier and simpler. Uh, I like it. And then uh, if, if I can't use this as a hydraulic brake and or governor, sort of act like a governor, I think I can use compressors or a comp an air compressor to do the same thing, to, to limit the, uh, the power. It, I, I know a compressor will generate heat. It'll turn that power into heat. It's got the fins on it because of it. Don't know about a hydraulic brake. It could be a pretty exciting thing to see water spurting or shooting or boiling around. I don't know. So as I say, this should be fun. I'm going outside uh, uh, sometime. Well, I said already to show you. I have begun to work on this already. And I think maybe that's enough for today. You can see I'll be having fun over the next few weeks, months. I hope not years. Bye for now.